In 2004, the NHL came back from a lockout and introduced two new rules that would change how the game would be played. Before 2004, a pass that crossed two lines, which was the red line and the blue line, was considered offside. This limited long passes that could spring offensive players into the opponent's zone. So the removal of this rule allowed for more stretch passes and quicker transitions, which ultimately led to more scoring. The other rule was the league's strict stance on cracking down on obstruction calls. The league would begin calling way more interference, holding, and hooking calls, and this crackdown completely opened up the game for skilled players. At the time, these changes were groundbreaking, and it would spawn a new wave of offensive superstars that would change how the game would be played today. However, in the last five years specifically, NHL scoring has seen a dramatic increase in goals scored per game. That's because NHL players have become really, really talented. In fact, they're so talented, it's changing the game in ways we could have never imagined. For the last few years now, scoring in the NHL has been steadily increasing. Teams are averaging over three goals per game, and that's something that hasn't been done since the early 90s. The most skillful players have room to create, work off the transition, and use their special skill set to create offense. Not to mention, the creativity and talent with each new crop of young players is seemingly becoming more and more prominent in today's game. So much so that it has essentially made roles like the Enforcer pretty much go extinct. But the role that has changed the game completely for teams is that of the offensive defenseman. I mean, just look around the league right now. Defenseman Quinn Hughes has gone back and forth leading the NHL in scoring and trailing right behind him is defenseman Kale McCarr, who by the way, literally became the fastest defenseman ever to hit 250 career points, beating out Bobby Orr. More than ever, defenders are crucial for creating offense and it's changing the entire game. Now we know all the top elite defensemen can create offense, but Let's put that aside for a second and just look at how teams in general are implementing all their defenders into their offensive strategy. In the offensive zone, some of the most creative and high-powered offenses in the league use something called a motion offense. This is essentially when all five players play almost a positionless style of hockey where all of them interchange during the play to create all kinds of confusion for defending teams. Teams like Boston, Toronto, Colorado, and Buffalo all use some sort of variation of this. When a team has possession in the offensive zone, traditionally you have some variation of two forwards low, one forward high, and the D staying on their point. Because the game has opened up so much and offensive teams have started integrating all five players in the zone, this type of offense is starting to become more and more common. Just look at all five Buffalo players on this play. If you don't know who the players are, it's impossible to tell who's playing defense and who's playing offense with the puck. Buffalo swings the puck down low to defenseman Owen Power. He goes high and then swings the puck over to forward Tage Thompson. Power follows his pass up, they use a fake, and look at Power jump right back in deep into the zone. Thompson finds the other defender who also has the green light to activate off the bench. And now you have a D to D pass low in the zone for an easy tap it. That right there is modern day hockey. This motion offense is something that almost every team uses a variation of now because every defender's ability to skate and move the puck has drastically increased. As a team, why only limit yourself to three potential threats in the offensive zone when you can use all five? This has given the best defenders in the league all kinds of autonomy to absolutely carve up teams in the offensive zone. Even when teams aren't using this motion and they want to stay a bit more traditional, teams are more aggressive with their D more than ever by shorting the zone. This is when both defenders get low in the offensive zone and compress the space for the other team. Defensively, you can snuff out breakouts with the right support, but offensively, you can quickly transition off a turnover and find an active defenseman for a quick chance. It also gives top tier defensemen like McCarr and Hughes the flexibility to use all that extra space to their advantage if they get the puck deeper into the zone. Then of course you have the most noticeable change and that's on the transition. If you've watched any of Quinn Hughes this season, you're probably amazed by how he can single-handedly take his team from defense to offense using just his skating or his first pass ability. Players like Quinn Hughes didn't have the flexibility to make this kind of pass 20 years ago. He would have been called offside for a two-line pass. Thankfully that's not the case anymore, but defensemen like McCarr and Hughes are now able to put up numbers like any forward 
not only because they are extremely talented, but again, because teams have given these defenders the green light to be more involved in general. Look at this goal here for the Leafs in their game in Sweden. Look at who is all the way up in the play. Yep. That player all the way up there is 40-year-old defenseman Mark Giordano. He's the oldest player in the NHL, and he's not exactly the quickest D in the game anymore. But even if you aren't a defender who has blazing speed, teams want you to take that offensive risk, even if you're not a superstar in today's NHL. Giordano here knows he can take a risk. He gets up in the play, receives the puck in the middle, swings it wide, and then drives the middle of the ice to back up Minnesota's D and provide numbers for Toronto off the rush. The result is a textbook goal off the transition. The speed and evolution of creating offense has given all defenders the opportunity to join the play. That right there is changing the way teams play the game. It's no coincidence that the best teams have a smooth skating, puck moving defenseman. They don't all have a superstar either, but they do have a player or a number of players who can do it by committee. This alone has changed the speed and tactics of the entire game for defending teams as well. To try and limit a team's rush attack, defending teams have become more passive on the forecheck against really strong transition opponents. More teams will run a 1-1-3 in the neutral zone to have a third forward high to avoid getting caught up ice and help with odd man rushes against. Older and slower teams like the Penguins will just naturally play more passive to try and counteract the speed by getting ahead of the play before they get caught in the dust. Teams can try and slow down these players and find different ways to keep them off the board, but at the end of the day, a new era of hockey has arrived. And with the speed and talent of the modern defensemen, the strategy for creating offense has completely shifted for most teams. The result is a league that has seen an explosion in offensive output and some of the most creative hockey that we've ever seen. The game has evolved a lot in just the last five years, and we're seeing proof this season in the top scores. But if this keeps up, just imagine what the next five years will look like for NHL hockey.